Good morning. We'll call our meeting to order. And uh, Mr. Uh, Larry Harvey will lead us in our invocation. Commissioner Turner will lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful day that you've given us to represent Putnam County. Father, we pray for wisdom for every commissioner here, every staff member, and every audience member, our citizens of Putnam County. Father, as we do the will that you want us to do for this county to move forward, we just pray for supernatural guidance from you and wisdom. You say if we ask for wisdom, you'll give us wisdom, and that's what we need today. We also need healing here, Father. We have people that are sick in the audience and on this board, and we ask that you heal them and bring us into your grace and your mercy. And, Father, we thank you for everything you do for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a approval of the minutes. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of minutes from April 24th regular meeting and March 20th special workshop. I'll yeah. second. All right, we have a proper first, proper second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, same sign. All right, this, we will now Mr. Have, Chair, yes, sir. if I could please, uh, uh, we need to add an item to your agenda this morning, sir, and it can go under county administrator's comments. It is the, uh, uh, the repair of the LED lights on the Huntington Tower. If we could, I'd like to add that item to the agenda this morning. Yes, sir. Consider it done. Thank you, sir. And also, if I could take privilege just one more time, when we get through with item five this morning, if I could make a quick presentation as well. Okay. Um, item five we may have to put on hold. Um, G is in a... So when we get to that portion of the agenda, sir, if we have time, I'd like to do a very quick presentation. Okay. All right. And so we will move to the presentation of the veterans of foreign wars. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bill Thompson uh, representing the veterans of foreign wars here this morning. Where each year we recognize uh, firefighters, EMTs. How about now? There you go. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Each year we recognize firefighters, EMTs, and police officers from the local area. Uh, this year, David Birch from the Bostrick Fire Department was recognized as our firefighter of the year for not only the county, but the Department of Florida for the state as a whole. So if David would join me, I'd like to uh, present him uh, a couple of momentums. This is a plaque in honor of the VFW Post 349 plaque and uh, for Firefighter of the Year Award. And from the Department of Florida State, recognized as the firefighter for the state of Florida. Thank so, you. Thank you. Speak to it, Dave. Go ahead and say <laughs> Good morning, uh, commissioners. I'd like to... other folks that sitting in the back that deserve it as well as I do. Um, I'd like to thank y'all for what you do um, and just thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. If I might, I'm going to have uh, Fred come up and, and read the uh, submission that he put in for David. Uh, you need to know the behind the scenes stuff. So if you would kind of elaborate on what your submission was. 
I had the privilege of meeting David Burt while teaching Firefighter One in January of 2009 when I started working for Putnam County Emergency Services. His dedication to the Boswick Fire Department has been unparalleled to anyone. With the dedication and hard work to his department, he was promoted to Assistant Fire Chief in March of 2011 and was promoted to Fire Chief in July 2011. He has been the organizer of the Boswick Blueberry Festival for the last five years. With proceeds from the festival, they do a give back to the community fund day. Two and a half years ago, he was diagnosed with cancer. Chief Burt would go through chemotherapy treatments and leave to fight wild and brush fires, medical calls, fire calls in his district, and a lot of times anywhere he was needed in the county. His love for the job would often leave him away from his family for hours on end. He beat against cancer, and again, he was stricken by the disease. He continued his treatments, again giving to the citizens before himself. He would spend 10 to 12 hours a day fighting wildland fires or what was needed to be done. He beat the disease again. In July of this year, he was diagnosed with brain cancer. While going through chemotherapy and radiation treatments, he worked numerous hours during Hurricane Irma for the citizens in Boswick and his district. His department cleared roads, made sure the citizens had fuel, water, and food while not asking for any outside help. It was an honor and privilege to nominate Fire Chief David Burtz for this honor. Thank you. Mr. Chair, if I could, and Mr. Thompson, the, um, I'd just like to say a couple words that I could about Chief Birch. It was, uh, all, a lot of it was mentioned just uh, a moment ago, but you talk about a dedicated volunteer. If there ever was one in this county, That's David right. Birch fits that slot. And he, uh, he lives within a block of the fire station, and he's Johnny on the spot, and he also does uh, a lot, if not all, the medical calls in the north end of the county. This is a very busy man, not to mention his personal battle. Um, he's just an amazing individual, and I'm very proud to call him my friend. Thank you, Chief. Yes. We have another award uh, for emergency medical technician uh, that's awarded to an individual who actually gives emergency medical treatment, provides rescue services or civil disaster assistance as a member of any public or volunteer company or organization to give emergency medical care, provide rescue and civil disaster assistance to our nation. This year's uh, Winner of that is Derek Edwards. Uh, Derek has been a paramedic with the services for several years. He was promoted to uh, FTO, I'm not sure what that means, this past year and has been a great training resource. Uh, Derek enjoys researching EMS topics and looking outside the box. Derek has a passion with EMS and has continued to build the services. He has been involved in several medical events, including cardiac arrest, saves, um, multiple trauma patients uh, with positive outcomes, integral part of the fire service. He has a passion for learning and teaching his skills to new employees. Derek is a great candidate and uh, a recipient of the Veteran of Foreign Wars uh, EMT Award. If he would come forward.
service to humanity by administering emergency medical assistance. Thank you, sir. And officially, we have a clock. There's a lot of qualified candidates for it, so this is a great honor to receive this. Thank you guys for everything y'all do for us, and thank you for everything. Thank you. We have a police officer award that we will be presenting at the city uh, council meeting on Thursday. Uh, other awards we provide throughout the year uh, is our teacher award, our Voice of Democracy Patriot Pen essays, which are uh, uh, intermediate and high school level uh, essays. Uh, so, uh, you know, be looking for those to come out here shortly for the upcoming year. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> We're going to do our Proclamation for Emergency Medical Services Week. And Quinn, if you would join me at the podium. Yes, if you want to bring everybody up. If everyone's coming up, I'm going to go ahead and read this. This is Putnam County Proclamation number 2018-42. Emergency Medical Services Week, EMS Strong. Whereas emergency medical professionals and volunteers provide medical care to victims of sudden life-threatening injuries and illnesses, often under stressful conditions and in high-risk situations to save lives, and whereas Florida residents and visitors ben benefit daily from the knowledge, skill, and judgment of paramedics, emergency medical technicians, firefighters, educators, administrators, emergency physicians, emergency nurses, and others who encompass the emergency medical services system. And whereas emergency medical personnel must rapidly assess, manage, and effectively provide care in unpredictable situations requiring life and death adjustments. And whereas Florida's EMS teams unselfishly serve on the front line of health care when responding to man-made and natural disasters at the local, state, and national levels. And whereas, it is critical that general public be made aware of, understand, support, and effectively use its local emergency medical services systems and whereas, a recognition is due for the emergency medical system for its accomplishments and contributions to improve public welfare through health care, medical transportation, injury prevention, education, disaster response, homeland security, and other initiatives that reduce health care costs and save lives. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by the Putnam County Board of Commissioners that the week of May 20th through the 26th, 2018 is declared Emergency Medical Services Week in Putnam County, and that all citizens are encouraged to take part in recognizing the hard work and dedicated services provided by all personnel providing emergency medical services, done, ordered, and proclaimed this eighth day of May, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I move approval. Second. Second. Yeah, we have a proper first, proper second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, be quiet. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you, Chair and Board. Uh, as we discussed last week, uh, or excuse me, at the last board meeting when we were talking about the ambulance and all, I believe we have the best of the best. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't say that lightly. I say that with, with sincere uh, integrity and meaning because I see these folks out there on a day-to-day -day basis working uh, tirelessly, 2 o'clock in the morning or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. They're having to make the right decisions. They have uh, uh, your family, my family, their family's lives, and all of our citizens' lives in their hands when they, they're having a medical emergency. They gotta get it right. So I certainly believe we have the best of the best. I'll put them up against any other county in the state. 
or the nation. Uh, I'd like to send several of them to competition so they can show the other counties, Putnam County's here. And uh, like I said, you know, these, these men and women deserve each and every accolade they, they get. And uh, we're gonna be doing a lot of things during the EMS week. Stay tuned to the paper. We're going to have CPR classes, a lot of open houses, things like that for, for the folks to come see what it is they have and the, the precious resource. So, thank you. Thank you. Which many people don't you think we should stand up here yeah. with them line Why don't y'all come up? Why don't we come up here, buddy, here. and let them turn on. Tall people on the back, short people on the front. <laughs> Why is it always only the tall people? Vertically challenged people in the front. <laughs> Just to remind you. <laughs> Thank you all very much. Chief Romea, I have to ask a question of you. Is it true before any of these paramedics can become official, they have to find a vein on St. John's Avenue for an IV bag? Is that true? <laughs> <laughs> That's what makes them the best, isn't it? <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, you know, driving, I, you, you don't realize how bouncy and how, uh, you know, the different things affect the, the trucks. And the trucks that we're getting are top-notch and we want to appreciate or thank you for that uh, but that helps to you know better getting, suspension getting the right suspension <laughs> getting those things because no, we're going to do gotta, something about that road too very shortly that's you right. gotta get uh, just right in and you know your road so you know where <laughs> that's to, right. to start and stop thank you chief all right thank you very much and uh now we'll go to the presentation of Keep Putnam Beautiful, and it'll be read by Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll wait for you to get down there with Ms. Mitchell. Are you gonna go to the podium? Ah. All right, Putnam County Proclamation Number 2018, Great American Cleanup. The Great American Cleanup is the country's largest community improvement program that kicks off in more than 20,000 communities each spring. This national program engages more than 5 million volunteers and participants who take action in their communities every year to create positive change and lasting impact. Whereas Keep America Beautiful is the nation's iconic community improvement nonprofit organization that envisions a country in which every community is clean, green, and beautiful place to live and has established the Great American Cleanup as its signature national effort for involving American citizens in improving their community env environment. Whereas, Keep America's Beautiful's Great American Cleanup is the nation's largest community improvement program, engaging more than five million volunteers and participants every year to create positive change and lasting impact in local communities. Whereas, the County of Putnam seeks to protect its natural resources and bring people together to transform public spaces into beautiful places. Whereas the commissioners of Putnam County recognize the efforts to engage citizens, civic and government officials, business leaders to work together to end littering, improve recycling and beautify America's communities. Whereas Keep Putnam Beautiful and the commissioners of Putnam County are committed to elevate the importance of volunteerism and motivate everyone in our community to become better stewards of the environment. Now therefore, the Putnam County Board of County Commissioners to hereby proclaim May 19, 2018, the countywide Clean It Up, Green It Up Day, and call upon our citizens to join in activities that promote responsible environmental stewardship and help us renew our commitment to building a better world today for future generations. Done, ordered, and proclaimed this eighth day of May, 2018. Mr. Chairman, I move approval of this proclamation. All right. I'll we second have, it. We have proper first, proper second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, same sign. So moved. Good deal. Thank you so much. I'd just like to take a second to thank you all. <clears throat> you um, 
every single one of you work very hard to make Putnam County a beautiful place, and it makes my job a lot easier to keep Putnam County a beautiful place. So thank you. Thank you for this proclamation. Thank you for everything you do, for your tireless work, and for encouraging the community to be a part of making this a wonderful place to live. Ms. Mitchell, before you leave, Mr. Chairman, if you don't mind, if you have nothing to do at the corner of 315 and 20 on the 19th, we are going to have a rousing send-off that day that is completely unaware to a lot of people, but we look forward to it. It'll be the best send-off ever to go pick up trash. That's right. And I want to tell you a little story. I got a phone call last night. A lady asked me, would you cook some pork butts for my daughter's graduation party? I'd be glad to. How much does it cost? Nothing. So it's got to cost something. It does. I need you to bring three bags of garbage for one pork butt each, and you can pick them up that day. So, Perfect. folks, anytime we can help pick up garbage, and she's going to do it in your district, Commissioner Goddard, on Hoover Road. So you, that area will be cleaned up because of the pork butts that will be cooked for her daughter's graduation. But those little things that we can do, they're silly, they're fun, but they help our community. Absolutely. And that's what it's all about. So thank, thank you, you Mr. Much. Chairman. And you didn't join, uh, didn't happen to follow up that those that come help, we will be feeding them, and you've got a tremendous cook going to be there, I understand. Yeah, our Rotary Club has, <laughs> is going to provide hamburgers and hot dogs out there, and Commissioner Goddard, by the way, is cooking hamburgers and hot dogs. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. <clears throat> sure. Terry, did you have something? Oh, we got to get our picture. Chris, you have to be out front. Okay, Mr. Suggs. Yes, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. If I could have Press Tompkins join me at the podium, please. Uh oh. He liked to fell out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. Uh, just uh, 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 quickly, I, I learned of this on Friday uh, uh, after our event Friday morning. And I thought it was an opportunity to, once again, recognize one of our very own for an outstanding job that's been happening here in Putnam County. That's also been recognized statewide by, uh, by his peers at the American Public Works Association. So without further ado, I just want to congratulate <coughs> Press Tompkins, uh, Putnam County's Public Works Director, for receiving the 2018 uh, Public Works Director of the Year for, uh, for Putnam County. So uh, please right. join me right. This is, this is an award that's, uh, that's very meaning to press, I'm quite sure, and it certainly is to us and for the citizens that he serves, because it's voted on by, uh, by, by a group of his peers. And so uh, when I asked him this morning, uh, who was it that uh, wrote the letter of, uh, to, to get him recognized, I figured it's one of our own. He said he did not know. It came from his fellow public works uh, directors across the state. So again, public recognition by those of those of your peers is is probably one of the highest honors you can achieve and I am thankful that we have press here in Putnam County working for us and our citizens and for our Board of County Commissioners. Press? What's the sign say? Yeah, we want to look at that yeah, sign. We want to, oh, there you go. <laughs> wow. wow. <laughs> cool. You'll put that in your parking place, right? No, I, I do want to thank the Commission because my job cannot be successful without the support that y'all give public works and we do appreciate that and the staff i have makes makes all this possible it's, it's not me I'm, I'm the one that people see but it's it's the staff behind the scenes that does all the work and they deserve a lot of credit for this also but i i do thank y'all and i thank my peers for this mm -hmm. also
Yeah, he don't want to shake his hand this morning. Again, congratulations, Mr. Tompkins, on the job well done. Thank you, commissioners, for allowing us that opportunity to again recognize one of our one of our own. Thank you. Okay. And that's quite an honor because there's 900 miles of dirt roads that he has to deal with. <laughs> uh, we're going to take a recess and open, we're going to recess our county commission meeting and open our port authority. So we'll now open our port authority. Uh, approval of minutes. So moved. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. All those against, same sign. And we'll now have public comment on the public, on the port authority items. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, I'll close that portion. Uh, any new business? Seeing none, we'll close that. Any old business? Seeing none, we'll close that also. So that'll conclude our Port Authority. We will now reassess our, or reopen our uh, Port of County, I mean Board of County Commissioners Port meeting without the Port Authority, excuse me, and move to public comment. We're going to limit that to three minutes. We have the blue cards if you want to fill those out. Uh, it's not totally necessary, but it's, it is helpful. So, Mr. Phil Leary, you have uh, three minutes. Please state your name and your address. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Phil Leary, 6052 Silver Lake Drive, Palatka. Uh, also, uh, I work, uh, have a firm, Leary Governmental Affairs. And uh, unfortunately, I have to be here this morning, but um, reached a point of frustration with a client on a code enforcement issue uh, that I've been working on with Commissioner Libel and the staff kind of indirectly for, uh, indirectly for about four, five, six weeks now. Um, essentially, uh, uh, it falls under the agritourism uh, provisions. Uh, my client has uh, 300 acres uh, in Boswick that uh, has cattle timber on about 270 acres of it. He has a small motocross operation on the, on the other 30 acres. Um, it clearly, you know, not just my opinion, but the opinion of the General Counsel for the Florida Department of Agriculture falls under agritourism. Uh, I've given you, um, or I hope the clerk has passed out, uh, a copy of the email that I sent to the staff uh, several weeks ago uh, outlining it statutorily, how it does meet that. Um, and basically, I've not received any uh, response in writing. And, and things have been in, in limbo, uh, quite frankly. And uh, uh, my client, who uh, actually are residents of uh, Switzerland, uh, Roland Wick Bloom and PKAB USA, have invested about a million dollars in that property. Um, it's in the middle of nowhere, basically. Um, but this has been, you know, my 30 years working in planning, zone, and code enforcement, this is one of the most bizarre cases that I've ever seen from a code enforcement standpoint uh, and, and the actions that have occurred. Uh, just a quick example, uh, about three weeks ago, I got a call from the client. We were operating because nobody had ever told me we did not meet the agritourism statute. We originally filed a PUD application because my client told me before we went back to Switzerland uh, that that was the only way that we could stop the code enforcement action and moving forward with a fine. Uh, so I did that, but I informed the staff that I would be researching the agritourism statutes, which actually I helped write as then Government Affairs Director for the Florida Farm Bureau Federation, and, and clearly understand the statute and, and what the provisions are. It's all articulated in the, in the email. Uh, you don't have to be a lawyer or a lobbyist or you know, anybody with a reasonable uh, education could read the statute, it's very clear. Um, let me just quickly, I know my three minutes is about run up. Mr. Chairman, would you turn that machine off? I'd like to hear the rest of this story. <clears throat> um, the statute specifically and the, and the intent of the legislature that, that local governments um, and agricultural representatives should meet for the purpose of discussing the benefits of agritourism to local economies and opportunities for cooperation, conflict resolu resolution, uh, regulatory streamlining, and incentives. The statute also preempts the county from regulating any agritourism activities. Um, so basically, uh, we've reached an impasse. 
and my client can't move forward, uh, we, we, you know, the, the PVD, uh, according to the staff, is going to take about three months to accomplish because they're so overwhelmed and overworked. You're understaffed there. You don't have a, you don't have a department head. Unbelievable to me that you could let a key department head go unfilled for six months. You think Georgia Pacific or Seminole or any private sector would do that? No. So I need something in writing, and I guess the county attorney's conflicted uh, in that he represents the planning board where the PUD may eventually, if we move forward with that, um, go. And so subsequently he cannot give the staff, I guess, a legal determination, um, all, all part of the, the correspondence, the emails with, with his assistant and Commissioner Libel and the staff. So I'd like to avoid costly litigation because obviously your county attorney couldn't represent you if my client filed suit, but in order to get to that point, we need a letter or something in writing in response to my email communication to the staff stating we don't meet the agritourism statute and why. You know, show me, as I showed you how we do meet it, why you think we don't. The county does have a motocross section uh, as part of their land development regulations. That clearly would apply to a, a venue where the entire property uh, was uh, a motocross operation. This is just a small segment and it's in conjunction with the agricultural operation, which quite frankly is a bona fide agricultural operation and qualifies under uh, the statute for Greenbelt assessment. So uh, if you could help me get your staff to at least get something back in writing to me, then we can move forward. I'd like to, like I said, would love to avoid any kind of litigation. It, it, it's one of the, in my 30 years, it's as clear cut as any, any case I've ever worked on. And I'll stop there, answer any questions. Thank you, uh, there May won't I? be any questions at this time. May I ask one? No, sir. Okay. At this time, there won't be any questions because you've already right. brought up about litigation, so that's not gonna happen. Okay, thank, thank you. you. All right. <clears throat> Any you, other, Mr. Chairman, may I have a conversation with your ass or not? Not at this time. Oh, yes, I can too, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to ask why him mentioning litigation prevents me from having, from asking him a question. I would like counsel to ask me that. Okay. We're you not can. in litigation. We can have counsel answer that. Okay. Thank you. Well. The there's a number of issues involved in this matter. Um, it's going to come before the planning board if if they pursue the PUD, and you all will ultimately be the the decision makers on that. So a discussion here would be premature. But let me go into a little further detail. The this matter started as a code case. Our uh, land development code says that if a, uh, when we start a code case, the um, property owner is given the opportunity to do what they would need to do to resolve it if that involves a PUD or a rezoning or a variance or, or whatnot. So they're given that opportunity and the code case is held in abeyance until that is done. If, um, uh, Mr. Leary and his client want to make the argument that this is an agritourism use, then that argument should be made in the code case, and the special magistrate will make a determination on that. So if they would like to move forward with the code case before the special magistrate, then they should be um, not moving forward with the PUD until that happens, at which point the special magistrate will hear the arguments from both sides and make a determination and then that the client can appeal it or, or whatever they want to do or, or then go ahead and move forward with the PUD if that's what they so choose. Mr. Chairman, first I'd like to sincerely apologize for my outbreak a minute ago. I'm not feeling well today. I understand. I very much apologize. <clears throat> Number two, I didn't ask this question to start a debate, Mr. Leary, so I, I don't I just, know this is going to happen. I mean, that's up to him, but I well, think I just, he chopped it off. But I was just wondering where this was going, and I think that's where I know. Well, Mr. So. Chairman, that, that's great. I wish I'd have had that information. I've been trying to get, you know, I said we'd voluntarily 
uh, go before the code enforcement, you know, magistrate for him to make a determination, even though he's not a judge. Um, but you know, we'll go from that, and then that would give, at least give us some recourse if my client wants to move forward to circuit court. But you know. Commissioner Lobel, what we've been waiting how many weeks to try to get, you know, some direction. I haven't heard anything about, uh, you know, having had no notice that, you know, we are going before the Code Enforcement Board. We just want a resolution. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is the place to bring a public comment, but this isn't the place to be debating. Good morning, Commissioners. Kevin Powell, Interim Director, Planning Development Services. Um, Mike Brown has uh, had communication with Mr. Leary. Uh, there, right now, there's a uh, PUD in, pro in place, uh, and past uh, history is when there's a PUD in place, we do not take it to special magistrates. So we've advised him in the past that if he withdraws the PUD, then we would move forward with the uh, code case. But I don't know if he's um, wanting to go that route or not, uh, or if his clients from uh, Sweden are wanting to go that route or not. Um, but but we but there has been communication with him from Mike Brown. Okay. Mr. Mr. Chair, if I can uh, yes, chime in, just maybe kind of uh, wrap this up a little bit before we get too far into the weeds here. Um, as administrator of, of Putnam County and, and over the uh, the Department of uh, Planning and Development, uh, with Kevin Powell as our interim director, I'll be more than happy. Uh, at this point in time, if, if staff and, and Mr. Lear would like to schedule a meeting with the county administrator, we can sit down together, uh, look at the correspondence that's, that, that's uh, that's either been sent or not sent and, and see if we can't get some resolution to this and move forward with what needs to be done uh, to bring this uh, um, issue further, uh, whether it be a special magistrate, PUD, or, or planning board, whatever it might be. The county administrator's office is certainly amenable to setting that meeting up to sit down with staff and Mr. Leary. All right. Sound good, Mr. Leary? Okay, great. M Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, I have a word. Um, Mr. Suggs, I think that's very agreeable. Um, and we've been asking for that for quite some time as representing the district I, um, and being there from the very beginning on this I have a problem uh, and this is no reflection on Mr. Manning or, or any of us but when he represents the very boards that feed planning and development issues to this board for resolution we need representation That's right. somewhere That's right. um, and I know in the past we would have outside counsel come in to represent us and we need to take a hard look at that when Mr. Manning can't represent us I, I don't feel good when we don't have representation so if we could address that at some point um, I think it needs to be done I don't know how the rest of you board members feel but this is very important in this case this is a very large uh, multi conglomerate uh, international corporation that we would love to have in Putnam County but there are some small issues wrapped up in codes that we have to work through with the residents out there that's all Mr. Leary's asking to do is to work through these hiccups if it can be done so with that said it's not very timely if we're to take him to special magistrate he's looking we're at 90 days now do we treat a business of that size with that kind of timeline and he needs you know clear crisp decisions if we had counsel in place we could better react and it would look better on us professionally if we could get this in a timely manner that's my whole hang up here that you know with we're asking for business of this size and this type and and everything but then we treat them like this when they get here we can do better and i expect better out of staff I really do this is not is there are a lot of holes in this and I'm not pointing the finger at anybody but we got to tighten up this is this is just wrong okay. mr. chairman okay briefly yeah I, I, I thank you mr. Lava I appreciate that and I I don't want to get too far in the weeds either but I feel compelled to at least ask a few questions to our attorney may may I ask those sure and if you can't answer them fine but if if the state definition of agritourism meets the criteria that Mr. Leary presented today, why are we even discussing this? There is no, there's a preemption that counties can't get involved. So if it meets that definition, we don't need to go to special magistrate. We don't need a PUD to stop at codes enforcement. We have no authority there. That's how I look at this. 
Understood. Um, and dragging over him. However, there's with, there's there's a difference of opinion as to whether he meets. Well, that's uh, this what, meets that definition, and that's why the special magistrate needs to make that determination. But Mr. that's his job. That's what we hire him well, to I, do. I disagree. Just only be, I, I, I'm not digging into this case. If there is a letter that produced that was is produced from the state of Florida that says this activity is allowed in the agritourism statute. It's a mute point. It, it's talking. not. It's not as cut and dry as as has been presented today. Thank you. Okay. That's Thank you, it. Mr. Turner. Yes, sir. Since uh, this had already been opened, <laughs> and I, I, I'm very sorry that I did that. I didn't yeah. know it was going to go here. And again, I'd like to apologize for snapping at you. I really do. <laughs> I know you're not feeling well, and I'm glad that you're here, even uh, though you're not feeling well. The um, I I agree with Mr. Libel in the fact that we do need to have a conversation and workshop about the possible. Um, the uh, possible conflicts that our council may have with uh, department council. I know that a few years ago they had different council and I know they still do for a few of them just for that reason. And so we may need to discuss that again. And, and, it, that, and in that setting, we would, may want to uh, get our the opinion of our council. To, does he feel like this is an issue? Because if he does, we may need to go on and get council for those boards other than him, if he thinks this is an issue, I agree with that. Um, the, uh, and other than that, I'm gonna let this ride because like council said, I think this is gonna go to a, another level of, of if someone in, someone other than, I imagine if you ask the other side of this, of this issue, they would have a totally different opinion of what this side was presented this morning. So. At this point, I think we might need to just step out of it. Okay, and so now we're going to have you two get together, uh, and then we'll bring up, as far as council goes, at a uh, workshop. Th yes, that's sir. that'll be fine, Mr. Chair, and, I, and I'm glad we're having this conversation here this morning because there are times when situations like this come up with our council. It's the system that we have in place, and we may need to tweak our system. So this is good conversation for us to have here this morning, as well as moving forward into a workshop for to have this discussion later. However, I am, you know, I, I do take a, a, a wee bit of exception, I, and I apologize for the way this might sound, but you know, we've we have been working on this for a little while, and uh, quite frankly. You know, 90 days is a long time, it, it is. And, uh, you know, but there has been correspondence back and forth that hasn't risen to my level yet as far as scheduling an appointment with me to sit down with, with both parties, and I'm more than happy to do that and get that scheduled today. But I just, you know, staff has a very uh, uh, demanding role and job that they play, and, and these things come up from time to time. Uh, but at the same time, you know, uh, there's been a lot of things said here this morning, but staff is certainly willing to sit down and talk with folks. It's, it's not just that uh, we're not willing to do that, and it has risen to my level here today, and I'm going to take that, uh, take the opportunity to go ahead and, and uh, uh, deal with that issue now, and uh, we'll move forward with it, but it has just now risen to my level, and we'll move forward with it as of today. Okay. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Sox. Uh, yes, sir. And, and just briefly on that, um, there, there are issues. Um, with me representing a number of the boards, the planning commissioning, the zoning board, um, there, there would be a conflict for me to um, present staff's side on matters that, that come before those boards. And um, there are, uh, I think, three possible solutions, um, and, and I'd be happy to, to discuss those more with you um, in a workshop. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, Mr. Zenny Best, I have a, uh, a blue card. I don't see him in here. So uh, we'll move to Larry Dezaba. Dezoba. Dezoba. <laughs> Larry Dezoba. I live at 181 Roddy Road in Polacco. Uh, first off, I'm a retired police officer for 24 years and 12 years with the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. I now work part-time for a local funeral home, but I'm not necessarily speak I'm speaking for all the funeral homes that are in Putnam County. And sometimes on our calls, we go to people who have been dead for quite a period of a time. And it's a shame that these people die with no one that are with any family or anybody that's with them. And uh, when they're found, that 
it could be somewhat gross. And it's a hazard to the community, it's hazard to the neighborhood, it's hazards to the people that find them, law enforcement, the EMTs that come. Can't we create some sort of program to, through the churches, doctor's offices, American Red Cross, Putnam County Sheriff's Office, any agencies to assist in these elderly people or people who live by themselves to maybe save one life. I know we're not going to save them all, and some, it'd have to be maybe like a volunteer program, but I think it's worth checking into and trying to do something for these people. Very good. I like that idea. Thank you. Thank kind you. of, if we ask, yes, kind of like a uh, wellness checkup. Yes, with our shut-ins and this sort of thing. I think these programs are documented. Uh, you know, this is something that is practiced in other communities. I don't think it'd be a hard thing to plug in, so to speak. Uh, Mr. Dezo, I appreciate you coming forward with it. And um, I'm sitting here thinking where best to do this from. I mean, Mills on Wheels was one of the examples in the past of I'm not sure what, you know, we have some of that through the Swanee County Agency that we support mm -hmm. on this board, so I'm not quite sure to go with it, but I don't think it's that hard a task. And, and it might be through the Swanee Agency that we do the Mills on Wheels program that we do this shut-in checkup. Well, you might be surprised how many people that we have dealt with in the last year under these type of circumstances. Oh, I'm sure. Um, We'll bring it up. Can we get that on a, a workshop for discussion, Mr. Sugg? Absolutely, we can. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, appreciate Thank you all that. for your time. Hope you get feeling better. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. Is there any other public comment? Any other public comment? Seeing none, we'll close that portion. We'll move to our consent agenda. Mr. Libel, do you have any items? I have no items today, sir. Uh, Mr. Pickens? I have none. Mr. Turner. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Harvey. I have one, and this is uh, item G, just for public information. Okay, and I wanted to, uh, I'm not really pulling item E, but I would like Mr. Uh, Quinn Ramey to come up and, and just explain this. Um, yes, sir, come on up. What, uh, I'll fill in real quick, 900 miles of dirt roads. <laughs> 500 uh, in District 4, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the record, boys, it's but, 840. Uh, <laughs> a, a, anyway, this, this, this is a very good thing that we're doing. This, um, it's been many years, 10 plus years, since we've replaced many of these squads that EMS has. These squads carry water. They also carry the jaws of life, extrication, and their ALS, meaning their advanced life support. They carry the same many of the same drugs that, that the ambulance does they just don't have the transport capability but the key thing and i think mr goddard is is uh keen on this along with the rest of you is their four wheel drive this is how we get to those places that we may not be able to get to with the conventional ambulance still get the the um, the als or like i said at the last meeting you know we're bringing the hospital to the patient uh, as best we can and this this these units are in disrepair and uh, in dire need of replacement uh, these three units what we're going to do is we're going to build them ourselves uh, not literally but figuratively in the fact that we're going to put the bodies on them put the tanks and and go from there right. if we went out in what i call store-bought one of these trucks we're probably looking at 200,000 plus in, in doing this. And I sincerely believe we can do this much cheaper than that. I'm hesitant to say one exact figure, but I, I can tell you I'm 99.9% .9 sure we can come in under that figure significantly, so. Excellent. Thank you. A you comment. have a comment? I, Go ahead. I commend you, Chief. Uh, the four-wheel drive is long overdue. Yeah. It was just, I'm sitting here thinking three meetings ago we were here where the situation where someone died in transport in West Putnam because of lack of four-wheel drive. That's right. It was on private roads, but nevertheless, we, we can do better with four-wheel drive, and thank you. Thanks.
Thank you. All right, item G. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, item G, uh, Press, would you like to come up? This is a work that's being done out at Ashley Lake. This is a F FDOT SCOP program. I believe it's SCOP or SCOP. Yes, sir. SCOP, yep. Um, I've always said in this business, don't ask the question unless you know the answer. Um, so this is for public knowledge. Yes. Um, press this gopher turtle tortoise item <laughs> has different facets to it. Yes, sir. And, um, but this, the good part of this is that we're at 90% completion on plans. Yes, sir. And we're now able to advertise Ashley Lake as it for, for bids on this. And this will be something that will be done prior to construction. Not today, but prior to construction. Yes, it will be done prior to construction. Right. So 90 days before we start breaking ground out there to do this, the gopher turtle will be identified and relocated and find a new home outside of the parameters of paving Ashley Lake. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. But if, if I could. Yes, yes sir. Uh, sir, this takes approximately two years to relocate these turtles. <laughs> no, that, don't you? we can do it pretty quick. I think. <laughs> <laughs> we move them fast. <laughs> no, and, and this was identified uh, in, in our engineering report. Sure. And everybody knows these are on the federal endangered species list. We have no option but to do this. And our consultant brought this to our attention. This is the fee for them to do the, all the permitting, identification, everything. There will be some additional fees later on. We get, and we actually have to relocate these tortoises to an approved tortoise relocation <laughs> piece of property. So it is quite an involved process, but it's something we don't have an option but to do. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to put that out there in the public before we start getting calls of why we're doing this, but we have to do this. Yes. and progress and just like we have to do with all these roads you know so thank you very much okay. I appreciate it. and congratulations on your award thank you thank you very much appreciate yes. it how many of them how many of the tur turtles did they find the tortoises i want to say there was around 20 some that we ran into that i meant that area is on a sand hill that's it's right. prime habitat for them well, right so thank you Okay. Please take them away from all our projects a long <laughs> way away. Please. We will. Believe me. We I will. heard they return. <laughs> within, if you relocate them within like three to five miles, they will return. That's what I hear. <laughs> Bring them out to the forest. We love them. Out. <laughs> we used to do that out in the forest years ago. I won't mention why, how we did it. But. Well, you, you now have to have an approved designated turtle relocation site, and they have to allocate mm. approximately one acre per tortoise. Oh, wow. So, so if you know anybody wants to put conservation land and relocate tortoises, it's a business to get into. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <laughs> okay. So, any other questions on our consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I move approval items Second. A through J on our consent agenda. <laughs> we have a proper first, proper second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those not, say the uh, same sign. <laughs> All right, we will move to Mr. Tim Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have no items today. Okay, well, that's good. All right, and so we will move to public hearings. Um, okay, so we have emergency services, Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. Do we have any, uh, I guess Ryan's going to speak on this? We got Mr. Ryan as well as Mr. Scott Modisette here this morning. Okay, great. Uh, good morning, board. Um, good morning. Ryan Simpson, interim emergency management. Um, uh, uh, basically, um, we all witnessed uh, significant flooding following both Hurricane Irma and Matthew. Um, the county has been presented an opportunity to uh, to seek. Uh, funding through the Department of o Economic Opportunity uh, under a community development block grant that specifically focuses on disaster recovery. And um, essentially, a total of $22 million has been available statewide uh, for, for applications and for communities to seek assistance. Um, the purpose of this public hearing is to um, 
uh, to request public comment. And at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Scott Modisette with Summit Professional Services to facilitate the, uh, uh, the public hearing. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Ryan. Uh, members of the commission, my name is Scott Modisette. I'm with Summit Professional Services. I'm here today to, uh, to conduct a general public hearing on the disaster recovery funds. These are funds that were allocated through HUD um, for a number of uh, disaster recovery activities throughout the, the nation. Uh, Florida received for hurricanes uh, Matthew and Hermine during the 2016 uh, hurricane season. Um, uh, let's see, it's about $117 million that uh, the, the uh, HUD decided to put about 80% of that is going to St. John's County with the remaining 19 other counties that were impacted by those storms receiving around $22 million that'll be allocated through a competitive process. Uh, they've given a very short turnaround time on the applications. They're actually due May 31st, uh, and they only just started recently uh, uh, beginning their allocation process and only, I think, last week had their action plan approved by HUD. So they're, they're moving pretty quickly with these funds, and uh, one of the requirements for the county to compete for the funds is to conduct a public hearing. Uh, we've sent out a notice, or the county sent out a notice uh, to uh, eligible units of local government within the county as well. All of your incorporated areas are eligible to apply for funds as well. Uh, the funds are going to be administered through the Florida Department of Economic Opportunity. They'll be the ones reviewing the applications. And uh, what they've asked communities to do, if, if your local governments have projects that they want to submit along with the county to coordinate with the county, Again, not much time to, to coordinate on the projects. Uh, they are requiring that the, uh, that the applications meet three criteria for, uh, for the application. Uh, the, the, obviously, these need to be related to uh, any activities need to be related back to damage or mitigation activities that were directly impacted, in your case, by uh, Hurricane Matthew. Uh, they're also allocating funds through this program through uh, there's some counties along the uh, along the west coast of Florida that were impacted by Hurricane Hermine. So all of these 19 counties are going to be applying for these funds. Uh, the minimum amount that communities can apply for, or counties can apply for, is $750,000. Uh, the maximum is the full allocation of $22 million. Uh, so there's it's a it's a pretty large amount of money that's available to individual counties. The, even though they are allowing uh, communities or counties to apply for the total amount of funds, their intention is to disperse them in an in equitable manner between the different counties. Uh, so we would doubt that it, uh, any counties would submit a, f a full $22 million request. The, uh, the way the money was budgeted through, uh, through Congress is that they're looking at not only targeting uh, areas where the disaster declarations occurred, but also they want a target on uh, primarily the money to go towards assisting with unmet housing needs, uh, either through housing damage or through uh, flood and drainage projects that protect uh, f properties that were flooded during the storm event. They are also, uh, they're allowing infrastructure projects that meet that criteria as well. So what we've done is tried to identify what potential projects meet your needs, what your priorities were during the storms, and what you've seen uh, from subsequent storms. I understand Irma as well had a, a pretty great impact here. Uh, they, they would be looking at mitigation activities that would protect against future uh, flood or, or storm events uh, as well. They, uh, the, there's, because this money is through the Community Development Block Grant Program, it has to meet one of three national objectives, one being that the project benefit low to moderate income persons, uh, two, that it eliminates slum and blight, or three, that it um, meet other community development, urgent community <coughs> development needs. And they have some very specific parameters that they use to determine how, how a project might meet that. Uh, we've been working with staff uh, for about a month now to try to identify uh, project areas uh, the St. John's Avenue area, we understand, yes. has some serious flooding issues. Uh, that project, we've run some, some demographic analysis on that. 
It's in a low income uh, census tract block group. Uh, you've got two, uh, two housing developments there that receive tax incentives to provide for affordable housing, which are, uh, are considered low to moderate income house, housing projects that are in that area. Um, if the project meets um, certain, if it has certain criteria that help to assist special needs or vulnerable populations, such as your hospital, or I understand there's a dialysis center that's in that project area. Uh, so that, that project specifically looks to meet nearly all the criteria and also would score extremely high. Uh, so that's kind of what we've been working with staff to identify uh, the project area, project scope, and it looks like it would be, uh, I think the total amount is around seven, or is it, I'm sorry, I think it's come down. It's around three, three and a half, four million dollars is the total project cost. Uh, and these funds could be matched with, you currently have a housing mitigation grant program application underway as well. It could be matched with those funds uh, to complete the entire project using, using grant funded dollars. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we had the county and sent out a letter to the eligible units of local government. As in addition to the St. John's Avenue project, we would be looking if there are any homes in the, in the county or in the incorporated areas that still have unaddressed hurricane damage uh, issues to possibly also do a, a, some type of housing rehab program uh, on, a, on a limited basis where individuals could apply for individual assistance. Uh, there's some pretty strict requirements on that. They can't have had any kind of insurance claims on their property, uh, and they can't have received FEMA assistance uh, previously. So we're, there's a, a duplication of benefits process that we have to go through to make sure they haven't already received uh, financial assistance through the program. And uh, so what we've tried to do is find a project that would address either directly or indirectly, uh, low-income housing uh, and provisions for protecting low-income housing, uh, projects that target uh, vulnerable or special needs populations, and then also have a project that's tied back to uh, flooding or drainage issues that were associated with, uh, with the hurricane, with the hurricane event. Uh, this meeting today is to receive public input. Um, to make sure that this project is consistent with what the goals are of the county, uh, to get your, your input uh, as well, uh, obviously, since it is a public hearing, but even from the public, this is an advertised public hearing, uh, we would try to answer any questions that would be available as well. I uh, appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Go ahead. Um, yes, sir. W welcome, Scott. Thank Always you, sir. Good to see you. Good to see um, you as well. First question, don't take it wrong, but how many of these counties are you representing, Summit? Uh, just Putnam County. All right. So yes, how do we get a leg up? You didn't. One thing you <laughs> left out that this, uh, prior, this priority project leaves out is the blight. It, you know, does that hurt, uh, hinder us in the application? It, it does not. Uh, the, way, the way CDBG works, it, since uh, the term block grant is just generally to, to describe it has to meet one of three national objectives. As long as you're meeting the national objective of low to moderate income, which is the primary objective that these funds usually go for, the slum and blight would, would just be, it, you don't have to meet all three criteria, it's only to meet one. Uh, so because the project meets low to moderate income okay. uh, benefit, it's- I'd hate it's, to get knocked out for that. The uh, St. John's Avenue project is, is so worthy and Ryan, right. if we were to go outside of that project into some of the other geographical areas of the county, I'm sure you can find a damaged portion of that that also <laughs> is blighted. It, would I be correct in assuming that? Sure, absolutely. You know, one of the uh, one of the additional advantages of uh, seeking uh, funds through this closer. program. One of the additional advantages of seeking funds for this program, just as Scott, I think, started to address, was is that these funds can essentially be used um, as to meet the to meet the uh, match requirement that is required through the hazard mitigation grant program, in which the county public works department is already seeking funds for St. John's Avenue. So. Uh, without the ability to, to, to provide uh, and to meet that match requirement, the, um, the ability for the county to move forward on St. John's through the hazard mitigation grant program is uncertain. So there's, there's a lot of dual benefit there. And also this project carries a significant uh, total project cost. And so um, uh, 
with the with the use of both of these funds, I, I believe that the project will be successful. Okay, I'm just looking for that leg up. This is a good chunk of money, and sure. Scott, I know you can get it for us. Well, and uh, let me just quickly go over the scoring criteria, and then you'll see how these this project oh, specifically meets these. Uh, you get 35 points for management capacity. Um, that's basically you have a well-organized emergency management office. Um, you would be working with a consultant to manage your funds. You also have all of the policies since you already participate in the Small Cities Community Development Block Grant Program. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the requirements is that you have a citizen participation plan adopted, which you do. A uh, citizen complaint policy is adopted. So we would expect that you would score high on that. Uh, you get 25 points for readiness to proceed in viable production, uh, having a viable production plan. Since you've already been working on your HMGP application, uh, you've got a project identified that already has some of the preliminary design done, so you'd score high on that. Uh, you're proposing a cost-reasonable budget because you're linking these funds with the HMGP funds, so you're putting in a substantial amount of leverage. Uh, for the project, storm resilience um, to meet long-term uh, and future storm-related damage issues, that this project falls under that criteria. Uh, overall LMI benefit, the uh, low to moderate income population for that census block group is around 69% LMI households, so you're, you're well above the 51% that's necessary. That and you're also targeting uh, one of the criteria, 20% or you get 20 points for protecting vulnerable populations, including senior citizens, low-income housing units, the dialysis center, your hospital, all of those criteria are met for scoring. Um, the main place that you might fall a little bit is your, uh, you get 30 points for overall housing eligible activities. That's why we're kind of looking to see if we could include um, some individual assistance outside of the St. John's area for individuals that still have unmet um, blue tarps on the roof and they still haven't been able to to get those repairs done um, so what we've tried to do is take the criteria you're fortunate that you already had a project in development that meets nearly all of the criteria and what we're doing is adding additional uh, components to your application to increase the strength of it <coughs> sounds good mr. Harley thank you mr. chairman Scott thank you and pleasure to see you also yes sir you as well um, don't forget that we're also partnering with the city of Palaka on St. John's Avenue. That's correct. Yes. And um, and I can tell you that our Better Place plan is looking to helping. So we've got a lot of partners in this funding opportunity to help St. John's Avenue uh, do better than what it is currently now. So thank you. Just keep those in mind because we've been working with the city of Palaka very fervently in the past year and a half. So let's keep that ball moving. Okay. okay. Thank you. And that, Thank you. I, that's another facet of this project that really uh, really is a benefit to the county is, is the partnerships that are involved in, in place. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, good morning, Scott. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Smith. Since these are administered uh, as CDBG funds, yes, sir. Uh, does that affect any other CDBG projects or applications that we have? No, sir. This, this program is conducted separately from your small cities program. Good. Um, I, I'll actually be back probably in the next three or four weeks to do a first public hearing for the next grant cycle uh, under the Small Cities Program. Thank you. Well, so I know that the, the these are separate. other ones are tied together. Yes, they're, they are separate and in addition to your ability to apply for small cities. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, okay. Is there anyone that would like to speak for this? Anyone like to speak against this? see none any comment counselor uh, what what do you need from the Commission then do you need a, a motion to uh, approve moving forward with application of the grant uh, no sir this is strictly a public hearing to receive citizen input on okay. the project okay okay all right Scott, thank you very much. Is there anybody that we can lobby to help this along or is this just something that's gonna take its just take its course. It's, it's strictly mathematical, stri strictly an objective application process. It's going to go in. They're going to weigh the criteria uh, based on their scale, and if it meets it, they'll take all of the applications they receive and they'll score them out and and allocate the funds going down the list. Thank you. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. 
Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you all. I appreciate Thanks, your time. Scott. Good to see you always. Hopefully to see you again in a, in a couple of weeks for another public hearing on the other yeah. grant. All yes, right. Sir. Thank you so much. All right. Mr. Tompkins. Thank you. We're going to now have uh, Public Works going to speak on vacation of Moorhaven Trail. Yes, sir. This was a continuation from last meeting. We have completed all the repairs on that area. Uh, Mrs. Chance even called us yesterday and said everything looked very good. She was well pleased with it. I went out there personally yesterday, late yesterday afternoon, and looked at it. Uh, we directed all the water away from that section of Moorhaven Trail. We directed it down to the cross culverts. Everything that we have committed to do, we have done, and I think we did a very good job doing it. So as far as everything on here, I think we've completed all the necessary repairs to do this vacation. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, any comments? Um, only a point of order here, Mr. Chairman. The, um, this is continued from a, a previous meeting, and I, I, I don't counsel. I guess we need to know which direction is this considered well, this the first hearing again, or is it a continuation? Well, well, there's only there's only one hearing. It's a continuation of the hearing that was started two weeks ago. Um, it is a public hearing open. You need to open that up for, for public comment. And then uh, um, when uh, the discussion has, has reached its logical conclusion, um, then we would need a motion and action from the board. Okay. Okay. Very well. All right. So do we have any speak uh, for this? Anyone speaking against this? Okay, seeing none. Chairman. Yes, sir. Um, I know that at our last meeting that we wanted to make sure that we brought this uh, project back up to where it should be for us to vacate, and that's the reason that we continued it. Now that work has been done and it's in fair condition to where to turn it back over, I move that we vacate Moorhaven Trail. Second. Okay. So we have a proper first, proper second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those against, same sign. So moved. Thank you, Press. Thank you very much. All right. We'll move to planning development. And that will be, let's see. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. Good morning. Uh, we're bringing a uh, change to the ordinance on the uh, local licensing. Uh, after a lot of conversation with the contractor review board, um, they're wanting to make a change to the ordinance saying that if the state of Florida offers the license, that we go to the state of Florida and eliminate those licenses locally. I know early on it was... Um, kind of fought uh, several years ago, probably 15, 16 years ago, when somebody was trying to bring those in here and put them in. Uh, they're uh, really not, uh, a, a lot of the licensure doesn't affect us here, uh, but there again, if the state offers the license, we feel that they should go to the state, get the license, and we do have uh, local licenses for the uh, trades of, uh, of carpentry, masonry, those type of things that are not offered by the state. Anybody who currently holds a uh, locally uh, provided license will maintain that license as long as they go ahead and keep it active, do the continuing education. Those licenses will continue to go on just from whatever date that uh, this is signed from that date forward. We will no longer be doing reciprocity or providing uh, uh, local licenses uh, in Putnam County. Chairman. Yes, sir, please. Uh, I realize that this was the way this was many years ago before I think it was Ken Baker came to town and decided that we need to operate like Monroe County did instead of like Putnam County had for the last forever. Um, and I'm fully in favor of this. Um, the uh, And, and uh, I just wanted to state that this morning. Okay. Thank you. Um, Do you have any comments? <clears throat> so if you could ex just kind of 
explain the duties of the board after this modification. What would be their primary mission? Well, they're still going to hear disciplinary cases, and we still will have uh, the local licensing available for uh, the, the licenses that are not offered by the state, and also journeyman licensing. Even though journeyman licensing is not required by the state, uh, GP does require a lot of their uh, people coming on to site to have a journeyman license. So we will still go ahead and, and offer the journeyman licensing. So they'll, they'll still hear the disciplinary hearings and, and the, uh, the contractor or the concrete masonry, uh, those type of licenses will still be heard with the board and they'll still do disciplinary actions as we uh, uh, go forward with the um, state licenses. Uh, we provide information to the state, and then the state will discipline those individuals. But it all starts here in Putnam, and then we push that off to the state. Okay, thank it's you. It's also my understanding, and please correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, that if you're a state licensed contractor and you've had a violation, that they, instead of just sending them straight to the state, give them the offer because they can't do it without them accepting. Uh, they give them the offer, would you like to talk to our board or would you like to go to the state? And if they got walking around sense, they want to go talk to them guys. They don't want to go to the board, I mean, to the state board. So That, that is true. And, un, uh, unless they file with the state, then it's going to go in that direction. But if we do get uh, citizen complaints and uh, we can approach that contractor and ask them, hey, you know, do you want to come and see us? Or they're going to file a complaint against you with the state and it's going to move forward with the state. So we can handle a lot of things locally or, you know, a lot of it, a lot of it comes down to um, a contractor homeowner conflict type of thing is usually what it is and it really isn't uh, mostly not a valid complaint but we do have some that we we have heard here and have pushed up to the state level and then the state will discipline the um, state contractors we will not do a local discipline on them uh, but we can try to resolve some issues one last thing mr chairman Sir? if i may um, what is it going to do to your workload on your uh, licensing department that you carry now? Will it reduce that workload? It's going to reduce it a little bit. It costs more for us to run and provide the program than we get. Like you said, um, it was something that was brought up from Monroe County. It is something that uh, St. John's County is uh, pushes over there, but it doesn't fit Putnam County. So we really don't get a lot of... Um, uh, people coming in for licenses unless they're coming in for a particular job and they have a a local license somewhere uh, they'll come here but it, it, it costs more for us to uh, maintain the program than to uh, do the pro you know to do the program that because we're just not getting a lot of uh, uh, contractors coming in trying to reciprocate here uh, one last thing mr. chairman um, how many different types of licenses do we offer that other counties don't and I know that a lot of counties, even on a county level, don't require things such as um, what masonry contractor. I think some areas you don't have to be licensed to be a masonry contractor. Uh, I mean, I if I would if I was prepared today, I could have come up with a longer list. But there's a bunch of them. So. Right. I, I can give you a list of what they're they're saying that we can still that we can still license. But you're right; it's not required. They can do masonry, they can do pour concrete, um, and do some carpentry uh, without a license, especially if they're working under a contractor. Under the Jim Walters rule, they don't have to be licensed. So they can work under a contractor directly. But if they want to uh, do some carpentry work, um, building decks and that type of thing, they can have a local license, and they'll be able to build decks on, on the back of somebody's house. Um, so right now we're looking at having... Uh, a carpentry contractor, concrete forming and placing, a uh, garage door, uh, a masonry contractor, um, plaster and lath, structural steel framing, and that's probably more the one that you're going to see. Those are the ones that are able to build um, the, the metal buildings. Uh, so you'll probably see any, more of that above ground pool installer and uh, manufacturer building installer. Manufacturer building installer is your handy house type of, of businesses that they can go ahead and uh, be licensed in that and set those handy houses up under uh, 400 square feet. 
Okay, does the, um, have we done away with any categories at all or did we just basically send the class A and class B to the state and, and just keep everything else we already had at this point? Right, Division One, Division Two contractors that are offered by the state, your uh, general contractor, building contractor, residential contractor, mechanical, plumbing, electrical, uh, solar, all of those that are at the state level, uh, we just, you're going to tell them they need to go to the state and get those. So those, those are the ones I'm that have moved. any categories of the ones that other, that's not required to be licensed. No, the, 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 those are the only ones that we, we have, and, and even in those, they don't have to be licensed. If they want to come in and get a license for that, they can. But concrete placing, we're, we're not requiring, you know, uh, uh, it's not required by the state for that. Um, the uh, masonry, stucco, those type of things are not licensed by the state. However, uh, some people like to get the license so they can go ahead and show they are licensed in that uh, particular category. Um, to make the uh, consumer feel better that they are dealing with a licensed contractor who has taken a test, who does continue in education. But as far as everything with the state, it's the same process. They're going to go through the, the testing process, the um, continuing education that's required every two years for their license. So we're not uh, adding any more, but those are the minimum ones that we do have here in, in Putnam County. Now I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Do you think we need all those additional licenses that's not required by the state or most counties in the state of Florida? Personally, no. But this is recommendation from the Contractor Review Board. Did they want to keep them? Yes, sir. Okay. And along with the journeyman licensing because of uh, GP uh, sending people in for journeyman licenses on, on their site. Well, I think we need to respect their wish for sure. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you. I do have yes, a question. Sir. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Powell, if um, a state licensed contractor comes from out of Putnam County and wants to do business in Putnam County, do they just show their state license uh, and insurance and stuff like that, or do they have to purchase some type of license, a local license, and is there a fee for that? No. State, state contractors uh, can show up in any, any jurisdiction with their license and their insurances and pull a permit. Uh, the uh, state changed the law where we can no longer charge them to register them within the community. So they can just come here, uh, show their state license, show their uh, workers comp and their liability insurance and we issue a permit. There's no fees additional to that. They've already paid fees with the state. Thank you. Okay, is there any public want to speak for this? Anyone from the public want to speak against this? Seeing none. I'll Mr. Move Chairman, I move that we send this ordinance forward. Second. Okay. We have a first, second. second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, all those not in favor, same sign. So moved. Thank and you very much. Uh, I want to thank uh, you for uh, the Contract Review Board for approving this, and we appreciate it. Thank okay. you. Okay, Kevin, stay here. Yeah, I think you have the next thing, or is that going to be Mike? <laughs> Mike. Mr. Chairman, Commission, Mike Brown, Planning and Development Services. Uh, next item is a rezoning R18008. Um, the applicant is Malis and C. Inc. Uh, the request is to rezone a parcel from planned unit development to commercial three, general commercial. Um, the parcel is located at 734 South Highway 17 in San Mateo. Um, it's an area that was just widened and opened of 17. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I don't know if, the, if your maps are showing up, but it, there's a general um, aerial of the location of the parcel. It's just north of Horse Landing Road. Um, the future land use designation is commercial, uh, surrounded by rural residential. It's not working. Uh. Um, 
Uh, like I land. said, it's um, <laughs> the future land use is commercial, uh, surrounded by rural residential land uses. Um, the current zoning, as, as I indicated, is PUD, planning and development, and they're proposing to go to C3. Back in 2001, the parcel was designated PUD, and that planned unit development allowed for all the uses um, authorized under C2, as well as um, the um, recreational boat sales and repairs. So that was really the reason for the PUD at the time was um, changing it from C2 to C3, or to PUD to um, allow that one use of the recreational boat sales and repairs. Uh, the applicant landowner has come in, met with staff, wanting to do some additional uses which would not fit within that existing PUD designation. Um, they had two options. They could amend the PUD or go to straight um, C3. They chose to go to a straight C3. They felt that that felt what their they felt that met their needs now and in the future. Um, the um, locational criteria in um, the comp in the land development code uh, requires C3 to be on a um, major or minor arterial. Um, US 17 meets that designation. Uh, the land use is commercial. Uh, there is adequate capacity on um, US 17 to meet the to meet the adopted level of service. Uh, water and sewer is um, will be presently there's a well and septic, but it will be tied into the county water and sewer. Uh, which is available. Uh, there is an existing uh, unused uh, structure that will be used with the new use. Um, the Planning and uh, Commission on March 14th uh, recommended, unanimously recommended to the board to approve this rezoning. Um, staff finds that it's consistent with the comp plan consistent with the locational requirements of the C3 zoning district, uh, compatible with the surrounding uses. Um, so staff supports the recommendation from the Planning Commission to the Board of County Commissioners uh, to amend the zoning for this site from PUT to C3 General Commercial. Do you have any questions of staff? Okay. Yes, sir, Mr. Manning. Uh, Mr. Chairman, be, before um, proceeding, I just um, this, since this is a rezoning, it is a quasi-judicial public hearing, and I would ask that any ex parte communications um, between any of the uh, members of the BOCC um, and either of the parties um, be disclosed at this time. Okay. Mr. I've Robert. had none. Mr. I just Dickens. spoke. I just spoke with staff. Is all. Okay. Mr. Turner. I've, I've had none. Harvey. And I've had none. <clears throat> Any questions? Mr. Any Chairman, questions? I have a question. Yes, sir, Mr. Harvey. Mr. Brown, you mentioned that in the C2 zoning versus the C3, the only thing that wasn't allowed is boat sales and repairs. No, what the, in the existing PUD, um, in the, back in 2001, recognize um, we have, that there's been changes in the code since that time, um, that boat, Boat sales and repairs were not allowed in the C2 zoning at, in 2001. Um, they got the PUD that would allow anything that was allowed in C2 plus the boat sales and, and repair. Okay. So that that's, was the reason back in 2001 they did, went with the PUD rezoning. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's the only question I have. Ready to hear okay. from the public. All right. Any public comment for? Any public comment against? Seeing none, we'll close that portion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer a motion rep uh, recommending staff recommendations on this proposal. Okay, so accept. Second. All right, proper first, proper second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, same sign. Thanks. Okay. All right. 
We now move to our executive session, workman compensation. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, I would ask at this point that, um, that you recess the BOCC meeting and we could ask everybody not involved in the executive session to leave the room and then um, we can go ahead with that executive session. Once we're done, we'll uh, go ahead and reconvene the regular BOCC meeting for the remainder of the agenda. Okay. We will now have a three-minute recess for, no, five-minute recess for a uh, board meeting.
understand. All right. <coughs> we'll now move to appointments. Mr. Libel? Uh, I have none. I have none. Mr. Pitt, Mr. Turner? I have none, thank you. Mr. Harvey? I will have one on the better place, but I don't today. So. Okay, and I have none. Okay, so we will close that. We will go to our county administrator who has something great and wonderful to tell us. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, if I could get Mr. Ryan Simpson to join us at the podium. Uh, I've asked you folks earlier if we could add an item to the agenda today. <clears throat> this is to uh, discuss the re, uh, repair and replacement of uh, our LED lights on the Huntington Tower. And I've asked Mr. Simpson if he would present this morning. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for considering this walk-on um, uh, emergency item as it relates to emergency communications. The purpose of this item is to address the emergency lighting system on the Huntington uh, communication tower that's in South Putnam. Uh, currently, the, the tower lighting is not operational. Um, it is a clear safety hazard and liability to the county. Uh, currently, the FCC has issued Putnam County uh, what they call a NOTAMS or notice to airmen uh, as a result of the lights not being in working order. Um, we ha our department has been in an attempt to resolve this issue for a number of weeks. Um, after professional investigation and troubleshooting um, of the tower lighting system, it was determined that the cause of the lighting problem may be a, co a combination of failed uh, lighting components. Uh, in short, um, because the lighting system isn't currently operational, um, there's really no way to tell, even after um, small repairs are made, if that, uh, if that would actually resolve the problem or if additional repair steps would be required. At my request, the vendor did prepare two different options for the county's consideration. Um, one option would be um, in an attempt to um, to address the problem by uh, by performing repairs of components in which the vendor knows are faulty. Um, that being said, this repair um, may not result in the tower's <coughs> lighting system becoming operational again um, after investigation. On the tower by a climber, um, it was found that a number of different components of the lighting system have uh, wiring had become corroded. There's parts in which should become um, uh, far, uh, basically has have become worn and uh, and so forth. And so, the um, one of the proposals was is such that it would again uh, address just simply parts that they know were faulty. Um, the the proposed cost uh, of that is identified as, as option one. Um, uh, currently, right, um, and then option two, I'll, I'll revisit the cost in just a moment, but option two was an alternate in which was proposed uh, as a replacement to the entire lighting system itself. Um, I can tell you that this proposal of a new lighting system would uh, be inclusive of an LED lighting system. Th that is the lighting system in which is currently installed on, on new towers today. The, the tower lighting system that's on Huntington um, uh, more than likely um, uh, was the original lighting system in which was installed onto that tower and we our department has seen regular maintenance costs um, it, to repair bulbs and to repair components it's a, a, a thousands of dollars uh, even just to put one climber on the tower for one day exceeds one thousand dollars in costs um, so this second this second option which was proposed is essentially a solution that would in fact address the problem um, that would uh, provide a new lighting system for the tower, would provide a warranty, and would provide us the opportunity to save money and repairs costs in years to come. Um, so in summary, of the two different options in which our department is requesting your consideration is in fact um, uh, twofold. One, option one will require an additional $15.43 to be authorized to the communications fund. Option two will require an additional $7,242.56 be authorized to the communication fund. Currently, the communication fund is depleted. So our department has no authority to move forward on repairs of any kind without authorization from the board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, would you say the numbers again? I'm sorry yes, they got by me. Yes, little. sir. Sorry if I went over that a little fast. Option two, or I'm sorry, option one uh, it would carry associated cost. Uh, beyond funds in which we currently have in the amount of $15.43. Option two, the new lighting system of which I'm recommending 
would carry an associated cost of $7,242.56. In addition to these numbers we have here? N no, sir, that, that would be, that would be, uh, so um, I had provided an email last night in which attempted to summarize the situation. Currently, um, the, through an action of the board on February 27th, there was ten thousand dollars in which were, yes, were which were allocated. So, um, a portion of that allocation is remaining. Um, uh, that allocation was for the purpose of addressing this very issue, as well as of paying a past due invoice to Hasty's Communications. So, what you're seeing, what uh, the costs in which I had just gone over for option one and two are considering funds that our department currently have available to use on this project. Okay, um, I got an email here. I think it's an email or a letter or something that says that the project total is for, I guess, what you're calling option two is 11494 That's correct. That is, that is the actual cost of the new lighting system. Okay. Um, however, that being said, there are departmental funds in which still exist from that previous $10,000 um, allocation that was provided by the board on February 27th. And those are included in this in this eleven nine, or is that included in the seventy two forty two that you still need? That would that would basically be um, so that would be the total cost of the new lighting system, okay. um, minus uh, funds in which currently are available following us our department paying for a Hasty's communication invoice. So. Um, the two different quotes that you have from Lovins Communications, one, one is for a new lighting system, the other one is for a pair of the existing lighting system. Yeah, I got and, that. And so, yeah, so um, the associated cost there uh, would be funds, the, my, my request would be for, for consideration of option two, which would be a new lighting system, but the, the amounts in which I had just provided would be the additional funds that would be needed to the communications budget. If, um so we, you got 10 grand to fix the tower, the different things going on with the tower, and you spent part of that 10,000 previously to fix other things other than the lights, and do you think this is the last issue that you know of on the tower? I believe this will confidently address the lighting problem at the Huntington Tower site, yes. Sir. Okay, that wasn't my question. Sorry. I'm try trying to put you on the spot. It's okay. Right? Not, Do you, are there other issues that you know that's coming at us? I mean, next month are we going to have 10,000 more because some other part of this tower is not working? I mean, you can't, you have no crystal ball, and I understand, but do you know of any other issues? that are happening at this time that you're going to have to come back and talk to us about? Um, Commissioner, I certainly hope not. However, we are finding that we have, we have regular maintenance related items in which we have to address monthly um, on one tower or another. Um, and um, that, that's just regular maintenance in which we've seen spikes and increases. And so we're hopeful that through actions such as this, like um, through uh, um, through the acquisition of a, of a lighting system that has a warranty and that's an LED system. We won't have to put climbers back on the tower to do bulbs. I mean, the LEDs, as you may be familiar, are, are long-lasting lighting systems in which don't, don't uh, encounter the same maintenance level cost. So I certainly hope not, sir, but I, I, can't, I can't make any guarantees because we typically have maintenance I issues every month on no various ball. towers. Yeah, I get that part. Um, Mr. Chairman, if I may ask one more question, and Quinn, if you feel that I'm putting him under too much, please come up here and join in <laughs> on the fun. I'm fine, thank um, you, though. Do, so am I to understand that we're completely out of that part of y'all's budget to work on towers, or are we just out of the part of the budget that counts fixing lights on towers? Does that mean that every issue that you have between now and October 1st, we got to have this? I'd defer to administration as to how they wish to proceed with that, but I, I've been advised to take this to the board for consideration. I'm currently right now to address the fund balance of communications fund. It's at zero. Good answer. Well, well there you go. <clears throat> we brought this back this morning again because we were allocated up to $10,000 for board direction to, to address this issue. 
And when we when we got into the project, we found that the cost was going to exceed the ten thousand uh, uh, dollars. Ryan and, and his department has addressed part of the concerns. Now the the second part of that concern is the replacement itself of the LED lights and then the uh, the labor associated with putting those on, which threw us over that ten thousand dollar threshold. So we're back here today simply to ask uh, to go ahead and and approve this emergency uh, need for repair. And then we will address whatever budget concerns we may have as far as amending the budget at a later date. That we can get together. Gonna, that was going to be my next question. Did right. you want to just address this today and yes, let please. you address the others as we go? I think that would be the most we appropriate. we want to put some more money back in their budget to fix the tower? Because anybody thinks we're not going to have any more budget? any more tower issues from now to October living in Disneyland. Well, I, I don't disagree with that, uh, Commissioner <laughs> Turner. But again, uh, you know, we'll address our budget as, as we need to. I think we can bring that back at a, at, a, at a future board meeting, but we certainly need to address this emergency item today to get us out of harm's way with any type of liability issues we may have yes, with the fact right. that our lights are not that. functioning. Thank you. No, I'm done now, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Thank Ms. you. Ms. Papel, did you have uh, any comments? Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir, Mr. Harvey. I have a question. And I'm not going to beat this dead horse, but 10000 was given to you back in February. You had some repairs and an invoice for Hayseed Communication. How much is left after those two bills are paid? Uh, so the, the Hayseed Communications invoice was uh, in an amount of $4,698.56. You don't have much money left. Yeah, after paying Hasty's, so that remaining balance after paying that Hasty's invoice was $5,301.44. Okay. So we're talking an additional $6,000 to go with option two. My question to you is this, why just a one-year warranty on a LED lights? I, there, I, there is a five-year warranty on this new lighting system. Okay. Five year. If I had said one year, I misspoke. It's apologize. written down it's actually here. Written. Even though it's misspelled, it's written here. I did, I did receive an email from the vendor stating that there was a five-year warranty with the new lighting system. Okay, so on the invoice it says one year, but we can change that to five years. Mr. Chairman, if there's no more conversation, I'm ready to make a motion. Okay, make your motion. Mr. Chairman, I move that we go with option two with a five-year warranty on this product. I'd be happy to second that. Okay, we have a proper first, a proper second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those not, same sign. Any comment on it? Any discussion? Thank okay. You. Thank you very Thank much. You, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. All right. Yes, come on up, press. Absolutely. This is a continuation, Mr. Chairman, of, the, of uh, County Administrator's comments this morning. Again, this is uh, uh, good news, and I'm going to allow Mr. Press Tompkins, our public works director, to share this. I think he ought to bring his award up there every time he talks. Yeah. Set, it, set it on just the podium set it up with there. Just hold it right there while he talks. No, this is good. We, uh, about a year and a half ago, uh, staff put in for a small matching historic preservation grant. We just found out yesterday, yesterday morning that we were awarded a $50,000 grant to look into the assessment and rehabilitation of the old jail building at the public works site. And the good part is there's no match for us. So we got $50,000 that we sent in us the contract here shortly, but I thought that was pretty good news to try to look at the old building and see what we can do. Maybe put that thing back into use again. And Commissioner not Harvey- Not for our employees though, not for our employees. <laughs> well, we don't know yet, we have to assess it. <laughs> I think HR would have something to say. <laughs> but the other good news is you, the Melrose Women's Club got awarded 19,500 for the historic Melrose Women's Club. Yeah. Yeah, so thank you. The county did pretty good on these. They have two and a half million dollars to give out statewide, so I think the county did good. Ma the maximum loan is 50,000 on the grant. So I thought that was pretty good news to share with the board. It is, very, thank you, Press. Very thank, good you. News. thank you, thank you. Thanks, so Press, just go ahead and stay there. Uh, just stay there. <laughs> my last comment, Mr. Chair, this morning is uh, uh, bring the commission up to speed. Uh, Mr. Tompkins and I, and possibly Mr. Manning, depends on the information I get back from uh, some folks in D.C., but we will be going to uh, Washington, D.C. on uh, May 23rd 
and saying uh, a couple days in D.C. we're going to be meeting with uh, some of our representatives, uh, such as uh, Congressman Yoho on some projects that we got going here, and as well as uh, Senator Rubio and I believe Senator Nelson. Uh, they both have given us great support on our Army Corps of Engineer project, and that is the focus of why we're going. We've, we were requested to come to D.C. to talk to the Army Corps of Engineers about our $20 million uh, request that Mr. Tompkins and his staff has been working on. We did get letters of support from both sides, and so hopefully we'll uh, we'll get some good news when we go to Washington, D.C. Yeah. We'll see. But, uh, we got go some ahead, press good, good exciting news on this. I mean, the Corps has been backing this project for us and really helping us to push it forward. They think it's a, a great project, and it would be able to ex expand our water system in all of East Palatka down 207, almost to the county line. And that would, you know, the whole infrastructure backbone system we need to provide water to that area. So it's, it's a fantastic project. We're getting a lot of good support from our congressmen and senators and all. And uh, like I said, the Corpsman is very excited about it, and I'm getting been excited about it, but it looks like we may come to fruition and hopefully in the next year or so, you know, actually have some money to do these projects. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my comments for today. Thank you. All right. Then we'll move to county attorney. I have nothing, sir. Okay. County commissioners, I'll start with Mr. Turner. Uh, again, I'd like to apologize for snapping at you earlier, Mr. Uh, Chairman. Uh, uh, it was very unintentional. Um, and other than that, I think I'll pass the baton. <laughs> Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, just want to bring your attention to the farm share uh, feeding families that's going to be out front here on June 2nd, Saturday from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m., uh, out here in the parking lot, so please avail yourself and come out and be part of that farm share program. would like to say that we had a citizen who passed away out in the West Putnam area. Johnny Mae Granger was 94 years old when she passed away last week. She lived a long, long life and knew a lot about the West Putnam area, so uh, our condolences go out to the Granger family. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Libel. Um, I'd like to speak a little bit about animal services this morning, if I could. Um, the addition to animal services is our new cat adoption room. And this room will be an area designated just for clients or potential adoptees to come in and mm -hmm. evaluate a, a, a cat, which we have plenty of, according to Lisa right now. Anybody needs a cat, please come on down. But I want to bring uh, a word of thanks to Placa Flooring Company, Mr. Jimmy Watts, for stepping up and donating this flooring and making this room very uh, attractive. And it's something we, I know it's uh, temporary, but it's something we need right now to continue our overall success in uh, animal services. Uh, also, staff on their lunch hours um, with a paint donation that came from Home Depot has actually been spending their lunch hours putting that paint on the walls and this sort of thing. There's a lot to be said for that. Um, I appreciate everybody. David Ponder is the installer of the, uh, the flooring, and we have, uh, like I said, different staff members that have, have done the painting. And uh, we had stainless steel cages that were donated from the Green Cove Animal Hospital with a, a value of $5,000. And then in addition, we had a digital scale that was donated by the University of Florida. So uh, anyhow, Bob Pierce, I think, kind of headed this project up. Is that right, Lisa? And did a fine job. And of course, kudos to Bob Pierce. He brings a lot of uh, support and morale improvements to this uh, agency within our county. And at the bottom of this, they go on to say that the shelter and the morale and just the enthusiasm among our workforce there, despite our challenges that we have, and, and we do have them, is at an all-time high. And, and they thank you, commissioners, for supporting what they do. And Lisa Suarez, as always, I thank you for a job well done. Yep. Thank you. Oh, this week. Anybody looking for a bulldog mix around two years old, 60 pounds, uh, <laughs> we have one named Chief, and he's looking for a home, up to date on rabies, uh, heartworm negative, and his adoption fee is only $20. And I understand this is a real good looking dog, so 
any of you folks out there, come on down and take a look at Old Chief. I'll cover right. the adoption fee, Lisa, if somebody needs help. I'll uh, cover the, okay? Yeah. There Mr. We go. Chairman, may I ask Commissioner Lobel? Yes, question? sir, you can. Um, where, did you ever get your soil borings back for your animal control facility? We, uh, we had that discussion at the break. I was going to bring it up at Commissioner comments, but um, uh, Mr. Suggs has got with Mr. Tompkins, and that is being dealt with. They're calling the outside agency to see what the holdup is. So I'll report on that as soon as I can. Maybe by workshop, 2 o'clock today, we might have an answer there. But thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Pickens? Just want to congratulate uh, Press Tompkins on his award. Very, very deserved. And uh, all the EMT firefighters who receive recognition today uh, also. Um, and uh, on a sadder note, I know uh, last meeting I mentioned that Mayor John Burke was passed away and just a, such a loss to South Putnam, to Putnam County. Uh, one of the pillars of our community passed away Sunday afternoon, Mr. Jojo Froelich. Um, you remember that name? Uh, the Froelich family has operated Wisnoski Farms, uh, our only potato farm in South Putnam, since the early 60s. And Jojo was involved in community affairs. Uh, he had three sons, Joey, uh, Jay, and Johnny. Uh, Joey's a former city commissioner of Crescent City for over 20 years, and I nominated him to be on the planning and zoning board, and he served about six months. So if you'll keep uh, the Froelich family in your thoughts and prayers, I would appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. Thanks. I just want to thank everyone for being here. Appreciate it. And, and our public is gone, but I do enjoy going out and seeing what we have going on all the time. And something, something's always going on on the weekends in Putnam County. And with that, Mr. Chair, yes, before sir. you close, uh, staff uh, graciously reminded me that uh, at 10 a.m. this Thursday morning, this coming Thursday, at Ravine Gardens is the uh, law enforcement memorial. Uh, that's held annually in Putnam County and with everything going on with law enforcement these days I just want us to keep those folks in, in our thoughts and prayers for what's happening around the world and if you got an opportunity to attend that function please do yes I will be attending that and again that's 10 o'clock at the ravines Thursday all right with that we're closed